My friends, we have a J45 style Gibson guitar here in for some repair work, and I'll tell you all about it right after this. Hello, my friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Yes, I said, we have a J45 style Gibson guitar, and uh, we've seen a lot of these over the years. Um, this one's uh, in pretty good shape. The top's pretty flat on it. There's a little bit of a bulge in this area here. There's a lot of rumors out there that these are arch top, and in my opinion, they're not arch topped at all. They're flat, but they do get a bulge right here, and you can see the bulge, the lines go out from the where the strings have pulled up on this. This is not too bad. This, it's got a little bit of a bulge, but it's not horrible. Uh, the one thing that there is a little bit of a problem with the bridge is that this corner is loose. Now the customer wants to keep the original bridge on this, so because of that, and because of the fact that uh, he uh, has a you know a budget on this guitar and doesn't want to spend too much, I think I'm just going to try to clean this area out right under here as best I can, and just squirt some uh, tight bond in there, clamp it down real good and call it good enough. And I kind of think that's okay on this particular instance. I don't normally do it that way, but I think all things considered, the fact that he wants to keep this bridge and all that, and the fact that the finish comes, comes up on the bridge and all that, and we would just crack all that and make it a mess. I think the best first approach is just glue it right here. Only takes a couple of minutes. It's not gonna cost him much money. If it does come loose in the future, then we can do a more in-depth repair at that time. So I'm gonna leave that. His main concern when he brought it here is this crack here. This is really sunk down and, low, and, and sunk right in here. And he wants a, a good setup and fret job and all that on it. So let's turn the camera down here and see what all this stuff amounts to. Well, first of all, this area right here is sunk a lot. Uh, w way more than you might think. Um, yeah, you could you could easily throw a chihuahua through there. Yeah, it's that's a hundred and fifty thousandths. Well, let's see. It's not quite that sunk. Let's try to get it. We'll try to get it from one side of the pit guard to the other. Right there, it's sunk about sixty thousandths. It looks like. Or am I reading that right? I'm have it upside down. Ninety thousandths. So it's about ninety thousandths right there. Almost a hundred thousandths right here, lower than, from edge to edge, it's about a hundred thousandths lower than, that's almost an eighth of an inch, just in that little span. That's a lot. I see the pick guard's loose on this corner. Um, it's loose right here. It's got a little bit of, you know, residue right here that somebody had some stickers or something on there at one time. So why is this so under sunk right here? Well, part of it is if you get chemicals on these pick guards, they shrink up, and that's probably what's caused this crack. But, and it's, and it's cracked right here too. But what I think the problem is, I think these braces are loose, and sure enough, they are. Um, and that could be because this shrunk too. It, it broke, it shrunk hard enough that it broke these braces loose. And there are three braces right through here that are actually loose. Um, can't really show you that very easily, but uh, maybe in the mirror you can possibly see it. I doubt it. I don't know if you can see the braces I'm talking about in there, but those braces are loose on the ends. And that's the problem. And both of those braces right up here are especially loose. This one back here a little further is not quite as loose. But I think we got to work on all that and get that all straightened out, get this flattened out as much as possible. Yeah, this, this X brace that comes through here is very loose. Actually, this is the X brace up here, and that's very loose. There's another shorter brace going to the X brace right here that's very loose. And then this brace across the front here is loose a little, but it's not too bad. So anyway, we got to get all that straightened out. I'm not exactly sure how to approach that because I really would like to flatten this out a lot as we glue that. I'm kind of thinking that I might want to put a flat board on here 
and press this up, you know, flat to all that um, and let the glue set for a while. Wow, it's really not an easy thing to do when you, when you have one this bad. I mean, this is very underboat. It truly is. It's more than you can probably tell on camera, but very, very much of an underboat. I think you can see it there. Very, very dished. More so than just about any I've seen, really. Although I've seen a lot of them like that, this was probably at least as bad as any I've ever seen. Maybe the worst. Enough talking, let's see what we can do about fixing it. I think the first order of business for me is to try to clean the dirt out from under this. And in case you think there's no dirt in there, look, look at that right there. Can you see that moving around on the top? Let me see if I can bring it in a little bit. But all this dirt right here came out from underneath there. So what I do is I take this flexible X-Acto blade, go in here and, and scrape and try to clean out trash. And there's some more that just came out. It's kind of like brittle glue and maybe brittle wood even. But if you can get as much of that out of there as possible just to get where you got a good clean surface, it's kind of hard to do. But I think that's going to be sufficient. Um, this tight bond really holds well, so I've got a lot of confidence in it. What I'm going to do is put the glue right up here next to the crack, and I'm going to use, the, use it a little bit like a squeegee and try to force it back down in there, or use the bottle a little more like a syringe, I guess you'd say. This brush will go way back under there. And it does, it's going way under there, quite a ways. And I think that's gonna get it under there far enough for me. Keep working it back and forth. Uh, wipe off the excess glue, then we'll clamp it. And then we'll clean it up with water too. See, I can't really put a call in there because these bolts are sticking through and they're sticking down in there. See if I can find something small to just kind of be like a, co a call to take up space. I'll try something like this, set it in there that I can put the clamp on. And I think I'll just try a little two-way tape on this. All right, I'm gonna try to get this up in there in a good spot. It just fit right in between the, the bolt and that. It doesn't fit very good, but it fits. So now I can get the clamp on this, I think. Yeah, it's still there, so that should work. And I'll put some leather here. There you go, you can see all the glue coming back out of there. So that shows you that we got the glue in there pretty good. Quite a bit of glue coming out, in fact. And so the way I'll clean that up is I've got a wet paintbrush here, and I'll just clean it like that take a couple of strokes and that gets most of it. Clean it a little bit more. Then I'll just take a, a little dry towel and get in there, wipe it off. And I've got a very little bit of water on this just to clean up the extra residue there. And take the dry towel and dry it off. Okay, that should be a good repair. I don't think that's gonna be a problem. The rest of the bridge seems to be completely solid. And I bet you this will hold better than the rest of the bridge now at this point. So I don't think he'll have any more trouble with that. And because he wants to save this and keep it all original, that I think is the best approach for now. Like I said, we can always go deeper if we need to go deeper. Now I'm gonna turn my attention to this area and see what I can come up with to, to make this area better. You know, I'm gonna do silly things first, uh, like get rid of this scarring on the pick guard here. And you might say, well, why bother with that? Well, I don't really think it's absolutely necessary to get rid of it, but these are lumps and they're sticking up. It's kind of like glue. So I'm gonna see what I can do about getting that off of there first. And I'll start with something that's not very, um, tough on the finish. I'll, uh, I don't really like to put chemicals on here. I'm going to just try water first. Let's just see if it'll do it. I don't think it will because I don't think this is water soluble. It's not. 
they don't stick up that high, but they stick up, and I just don't like the idea of working on this with anything sticking up because I'm going to be putting a lot of pressure on there. So I'm going to try a little bit of this lighter fluid um, on the tip of this and see if that will clean it off. I don't really like to put chemicals on plastic, but you kind of got to do what you got to do sometimes. You can see there how much is coming off. It's still raised up. Put just a little bit more on there. See if I can get the rest of it off. I don't really feel it like I did. I can still see it, but I don't feel it sticking up. It was up a pretty good bump, a good sixteenth of an inch or better, and still up right there. I'm going to see if uh, a little bit of the semi-chrome will work any miracles here. I got the water here and uh, to see if that will rub that off of there. Yeah, that seems to be taking it off. Some of it anyway. You know, for my money, I, I'll just talk about a PSA right here. Um, I wouldn't put stickers on your on your over your finish or over your plastic parts or any anywhere on your guitar uh, if you can avoid it. I mean, I know there are certain certain circumstances where, like for instance, a death or something, and you want to recognize a person. I understand that kind of thing, but if you're at all concerned about your instrument, I really wouldn't put any kind of stick on any kind of stick on lettering or treatment to your instrument because it will always create a problem. It almost always does. I rarely see anything come off clean. It's about 80% gone, maybe 90% gone. Yeah, I get rid of most of it, but you can still see it a little bit when you turn it the right way in the light. But I'd say 95% of it is gone. So we're going to move on from there. And I'm going to find me a block of wood that I can lay over the top of this that'll cover this general area. That'll be a kind of a soft wood, but yet flat and hard enough to keep it, you know, because I want to be able to push everything up against that really good and really tight. The customer didn't really bring this for the bridge being loose, but I noticed just this corner was loose. The rest of the bridge seems completely tight. And I asked him about that, and he says he wants to keep the bridge original. He doesn't, you know, like it's got these mechanical fasteners, which I am definitely not a fan of. But, uh, you know, he says if possible, you know, keep it original. And uh, if I have to change it, he's okay with that, but he'd rather not. So, because it was only loose on this corner, um, I decided I would just, you know, clean that out. I took an X-Acto blade, got under there, cleaned it out the best I could, and then I squeezed glue under there really well and clamped it down. I left it about three hours. I took the clamp off of it. It didn't hold. That's really the first time I've had that experience in a very long time. So this clamp has been on here now about 18 hours, and... Right now, on camera, we're going to take it off and see if it's held this time. And if it didn't, we're going to take the whole bridge off and fix it. So here we go. I promise you, I don't know because I haven't taken it off. It's been on there for 18 hours. And um, I've got a little block on the inside in here that was uh, double-sided taped up to the top there so that uh, the clamp you know, would be pressing on that to give it a little bit of extra space. It looks like it held this time, but uh, the best test is to take something like a piece of paper like this and see if it'll slide under there. Oh, quite honestly, it looks like it's going a little bit. Doggone it. Doggone it. I can't believe that's not holding. I really usually don't have that problem. It's only going under a tiny bit now compared to where it used to go back under there about that far. So, I don't know. I'll think on that. Doggone it, I'm really disappointed in that. I really thought that would hold because the glue was under there really well. And it. the problem with this kind of thing is that the glue can't cure as well because it's all trapped in there. So 
Maybe I should have left it at two days, you know. Doc gunning anyway. We'll just have to wait and see what we're going to do about that. Well, I'm a little bummed that that didn't uh, hold better than it did. I'm going to give it a few days and then retest it and see, you know, if it's still stuck or not. Uh, mainly, I don't want to leave the clamp on it because I want to get busy on this side. This is what it's really in here for. It wasn't even in here for this spot that right here, but I still want to fix that if we can. Uh, or I at least want to make sure that it's held well enough. But right now, I'm going to turn my attention to this area here. And basically, I'm going to just call this a canal because you could float a boat right down this right now. It's really bad. It's one of the worst I've ever seen. It truly is for such a short distance, you know, and I am positive it's because this pick guard has shrunk so much and uh, Again, I blame that shrinkage on chemicals. You put chemicals on your pick guards, any kind of spray on polishes like Pledge or, or the ones that even come from the guitar manufacturers, those chemicals will cause your pick guards to shrink. I say do not ever use liquid polishes on your pick guards, ever. None, zero, none, not any. I've told you, I've warned you, that's all I can do. You do what you want to. I know there's three loose braces inside here, and so we've got to find a way to flatten this area, get those braces glued back, and hopefully it will hold. And it's kind of a big hope at this point, because there's a lot of pressure on these pick guards once they shrink like that. Let's see what we can do. I have made up a board that I think will help me with this. I want this board on here, and what I want it mostly is to span this area here, this area right here, because those are strong areas. You can push down on them, and they're not going to go anywhere. So I, you know, and I'm, I might even, I might even notch out a little bit here to go over the bridge, so that I can tr put it a little more straight like this. In fact, I think I will. I think maybe I'll just uh, just cut a notch in it right here because. You know, I, I really want to get it where it's just barely on this corner and, you know, cover the, as much of the sunk area as possible. So I think I will do that. I'll just mark this off a little bit, you know, something like this. Probably a little more than that, actually, about right there. So I'm just going to cut that out. Okay, that does a good job of covering the areas that I want to cover. And uh, by the way, I smoothed this off and rounded the corners off so that they don't dig in anywhere. In fact, I'm going to round this one off a little bit more right here because that could dig in here. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and round all the corners off. Any place that it's over the, the wood. Uh, actually, these corners down here aren't going to be a problem, but I'm going to round these all these corners off, these three corners right here, and make sure that they don't make an imprint in the top. Hopefully you can see that I have rounded those off quite a bit so that they shouldn't make contact with the top. Um, that's important because you can leave an imprint. Okay, I think we're pretty close to having this where I want it. That'll give me a lot of strength right here to pull all this up uh, when I put the clamps on this. So I've got this made, I'll set that aside right now and I'll turn my attention on the inside and try to figure out how I'm going to get glue in there and get that all uh, clamped up. So I'm going to do some off-camera work just looking at that to uh, get a plan of attack. Well, I gotta be honest with you, it's, I think this is a challenge. Um, each of the three braces that are in this area here, there's like three braces in this area, each of them are loose about that far back from the edge. They all go to the edge here, and from that edge back, I would say an inch, inch and a half, roughly, is how, how much they're loose. Ah, uh, boy. You know, you need to get glue in all three of them at once, and they need to all three be clamped at once. <sighs> boy, I don't know. It's, it's not a simple, simple job. I don't know that I can get anything in there to clean them out real good either. That's the other problem. I always like to clean the joints as best I can. But in a case like this, it's not easy to really get in there and clean the joints. 
I'm going to see if I can get this in there at all, but probably not. It's just so tight and just really hard to do. Really can't do much. It's just difficult. I don't even know how I'm going to get glue in there because, see, you got to go, you, what you don't realize is you have to go down and then back up and then you have to go sideways under those uh, braces to get the glue in there. Wow, it's, uh, whew, it's a challenge on the very best day. It's a real challenge. Here's a brush that I've made for such things in the past, but I don't know if this brush will even do this. You know, if you don't get real good glue coverage, you're just wasting your time. So that's my point is I, I want to be able to get in here and get really good glue coverage. I can get this first big X brace. Let me see if I can get to this one. Uh, not as easy, not as good. I can probably get that one. Can I get the one back here? Yeah, maybe. Boy. I gotta tell you, this is not gonna be an easy one at all. Boy, I wish the back was off this, but there is no way I would take the back off this guitar just to fix those three braces. There's, I'd rather have you shoot me in the face. Yeah, I gotta do some more thinking on this. I'll tell you another equally big challenge on this, and it's a big challenge. It's not a small challenge at all, and that is clamping it because you've got a small hole and you've got three big clamps that need to go in here and you really do need to do all three of them at the same time. You don't have to, I might, maybe I should rethink that and maybe I should try to do one at a time, but I'm afraid that's too much pressure on one brace and I'm afraid it may cause the one brace to break because you're bending something here that's huge and you're, you're relying on the braces to rebend this and straighten it out. And I'm just afraid to do one brace at a time because I'm afraid it'll break the brace. It's just too much stress on it. I'm actually a little concerned it may break all three braces when I do them all three at the same time. So, so not only do I have to worry about getting the glue up on this, but I also have to think about how am I going to clamp all three at the same time. I'm not sure all three of these are going to fit in here at the same time. In fact, I don't think they're going to fit in there at all. I'm probably going to have to use smaller braces, uh, smaller clamps to fit in this hole and to spread out here. So I'm going to have to do some creative clamping. Let me see what I can come up with and I'll show you what that'll look like here in just a minute. Well, there's my dry clamping. Um, now keep in mind that's dry. You want to always test the, whenever you got a tough situation, you want to test it. Trust me, you could hear this just cracking and popping as I'm tightening this up. Not, not so much popping, but you could just, you could just hear kind of a crunching, crunching sound all the whole time because you're really putting some pressure on something when you're bending it that much. Uh, that's pretty good. It's probably as good as we can do. I can't see how we could do it much better. The trick is now getting the glue in all the three of those uh, braces and then getting that clamp down tight and then we're going to let it set for at least 24 hours, maybe two days because I want it to have time to really cure this time because this has got some major stress on it. Okay, I'm a little bit leery of it, but you know, you just got to do what you got to do. So I'm going to take these braces back out and uh, just set them aside here and see what happens. Uh, wow. <laughs> I really, uh, yeah, I'm, I got to be honest, I'm hesitant on this one. This is a tough one. This is not simple at all. I'm still monkeying with the glue idea of how I'm going to get the glue in there. I think this is the only option I got right at the moment. And I know some people would say use a syringe and all those things, but first of all, I don't get along with syringes. I try to squeeze glue out of them and that glue just doesn't come out. Uh, it just, I've just had more trouble with syringes than they're worth in my opinion. Um, and 
you got to understand that you got to go under and then back up and around and around on a side and a syringe doesn't bend like that very easy I know you could bend the needle but most of the time that's going to kink uh, yeah this to me is the surest fire way because you can reach right in there and squeeze it into the cracks and stuff I'm pro brush in this case and that's probably the way I'm going to do it I'm just trying not to jump in too fast make sure I didn't get my horse in front of the cart somewhere I'm, I'm debating on whether I should try to put glue on this before I mess with the braces or do this afterwards. And I kind of think I better do this afterwards. I'm afraid I'll glue this thing down. I'm afraid glue will squeeze out and glue this board down. This is so tight I can't get glue in there anyway. Most likely I'm going to glue this with CA glue because it's just a very, very, very tight crack. Here I go. Wish me luck. I really haven't dreaded one this much in a long time, but I'm dreading this one. I'm going to squeeze glue out on here to help control what I'm doing. Then what I'm going to do is uh, make a mess right here on my thumb first. I'm going to do that first, and then I'm going to get some glue on this brush. I'm going in. And we'll see how it goes. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but neither can I. So there you go. So we're even. It's making a mess, I'll have to be honest, but it's getting the glue in there too. So hopefully it's going to work. I don't know if I can get on the back side, but if I could get on the back side of this brace, I would like to do that and try to get glue in from both sides because it's very difficult to tell if you're getting all the way through. That looks pretty good on the first one, so I'm going to go to the second one now. I'm just going to try to get glue on all three of them first because I don't think I'd have room to get in here once I get the clamps in. The procedure or the technique that I'm using here is I look at the mirror to see that I get the brush in the right place, but then once I get the brush in the right place, then I actually look on the top of the guitar and pretend like I can see through the top of the guitar, and then that way I'm not doing everything backwards. You know, because if you keep looking in the mirror, everything is backwards, and it's very difficult to control. So... You know, I, again, I look in the mirror till I get it where I want it, and then I look at the top of the guitar and move it along there and glance at the mirror every once in a while to make sure I'm getting it where I think I'm getting it. And I am. I'm getting it a very good coverage on this second brace. Second brace was a lot easier because I can get to it much easier. The third brace is going to be tough. I'm going to try to get on the back side of the second brace now, like I did on the first one. Now that's going to be tougher because this one's at a steep angle. I can see the glue's already come through on both sides of this one though, so I'm in better shape already. And I did get there. I got there and I got glue on it. Uh, looks pretty good actually. All right, so now I'm gonna try to get glue on the third brace. This one's not too bad. Again, once I get the brush in the right place, I try not to look in the mirror as much because it's hard to tell which way to move it when you're looking in that mirror. I don't know if I can get on the back side of this one, I'll be honest. This is going to be a tough one to get on the back side of. But I'm getting the brush all the way under that one, so I think I'm doing okay. I think that's as good as it's going to get done by me anyway. Okay, we got this here. Lay it there. I'm going to start with this farthest brace here, and uh, I'm going to need the mirror in there again so I can even see what I'm doing. Make sure I'm getting the clamp in the right place. I, you know, that's the other problem is that these uh, 
braces have a real slope on them on the very end and I'm trying to get down on that end as far as I can without going over that slope. Okay, got two on there. Can we get the third one on now? Like we did when we were dry. If we can get the third one on there, we may have this whipped. I hope so. Wow. Can't get my hands where I need them to go and I can't get the mirror where I want it to go. I can sort of see it. It's not very good visually, but I can sort of see it. And it's clamping really good. That one there actually has the most squeeze out so far, so that's good. The other, the other ones look good too, though. Now I'm gonna go back and retighten them because once you tighten up each additional one, that's pulling more of that bow out of this top. Boy, that looks pretty darn good to me. I'll be honest, it's a little sloppy in there. But, you know, what are you going to do when you got something like this, you know? Man, I'm not going to breathe too hard I'm just, because I'm afraid I'll <laughs> bump it loose. So I'm going to let that baby set for sure 24 hours and maybe two days. I really think I'm going to go two days on this because of the extreme stress pulling that back up. That's the only option I think I've got at the moment. I'm just going to let it sit there and percolate for a couple of days. Well, my friends, it's been a couple of days. I just took the clamps off this moments ago. In fact, I did it live on my Shop Talk. And uh, you could see that if you want to look up Shop Talk number 93, where I took the clamps off this. But, uh, you know, I would say overall, the operation was successful. We got this pretty flat across here. Um, is it perfectly flat? No, it's not perfectly flat, but it's pretty flat compared to the way it was. Okay, did it create any other problems? Well, the truth is, yeah, it kind of did. That is that it's kind of pushed this side of the fretboard up a little bit. So this can go down and this will get rid of some more of the curve when this goes down. This is cracked right here, but that was cracked already from the shrinkage. So I'm going to see if we can get some glue in here, get a clamp on this, and let that set for a day or two. Quite honestly, this one here might be a CA glue thing instead of a regular glue, but I'm going to try regular glue first. Uh, this one here, this crack here, probably just going to have to go to CA glue because it's just so f such a fine crack. This one here, again, might be CA glue also, because right across here it's cracked, see? And so I want to try to force this down, try to force this down. Yeah, it's a tough one. i got to be honest, this is not easy because there's no good way to clamp it and hold it and get the glue in there because the cracks are so, so tight. Um, I can put a call across on the inside of this crack. I can feel that, so maybe that's my best solution is to put a couple of calls on this, clamp it down really tight, and maybe that'll hold it. Just I'm just thinking out loud, but you know you gotta you gotta try to run through all the scenarios you can think of. This area here, I could probably call this right here too, but that call might show but I don't know what else to do about it. And I might be able to call it on the other side of this brace. There's a brace right here. And I might be able to call it a little bit on both sides of the brace. I think that's the route I'm gonna have to go because I can't think of anything else to do here. In fact, I think what I'm gonna do is maybe put a fairly large call right here, make it maybe this big and where it spans most of that distance. I really think that might be the best approach. I'll show you what I come up with. Well, this is the piece of wood I've come up with. It's uh, the grain is running this way, which is perpendicular to the top. It's good high high select spruce. Uh, it's going to fit in there pretty much like a glove. In fact, it fits in there so good. I, well, maybe not. I thought I could turn it loose. Well, not on camera, of course, but I turned it loose before and it held. No, it won't. Won't stay there now, but uh, it definitely stayed there a minute ago, and it, it fits in there very tightly in between the braces and stuff. I think I'm just going to go ahead and get the glue on this, get this all clamped down, and let it set for at least 24 hours.
Gonna double check the way it goes in there again, just to make sure. Okay, this is the side I want the glue on. Just gonna take one more quick look at it to make sure it's what I want. Absolutely looks perfect. It looks like it, it was it looks like it was factory made to fit in that spot. I mean it's absolutely airtight. What I'll do now is uh, probably put a little block of wood up in there as a as a call if it'll fit. I may have to I should have probably used that to cut me a block of wood before I put it in there. That would have been smart. But nobody ever said I was really smart. I'll cut myself a little block of wood to use as a call and I'll put a block on top of this and we'll clamp it down like so. Okay, I made this little call to fit up on top of that and it fits pretty good. I'm just gonna take a block of wood, something like this, maybe a little bigger. Maybe I'll just use my uh, deal like this and clamp it down and uh, that should be just fine. Hold it up there in place. Well, now that I think about it, this is going to be a little problem because there's a brace in the way. So I need something that can span this. Either this call needs to be thicker or I need something that can span that. I've got this CA glued together. This will give me the thickness I need to get up in there and let the clamp span the, the uh, brace that's there. Then I can take this, come up to that, like so. Uh, if I only had three more hands, this would be a piece of cake. And then I can put this on here and hopefully get it just the way I want it. Well, that is not working for some reason. I don't know why it's not working, but it's some reason it's not going back in there where it used to, there now it's back in there I didn't have it in the right place I thought I did but I didn't that'll that'll hold that one now I'll try to do something similar here but this will be a smaller call that will clamp this together right here okay I've cut this little piece of wood you can see I've already drawn a line on there so all I did was just mark it and draw it. Now I'm going to cut this a, a little bit more than you see there. I'm going to cut away some more so it doesn't show in the hole here. So I'm going to go over to the bandsaw and I'm going to cut and I'm going to take away the line. I'm going to cut on the inside of the line. That way it'll be back behind there. Okay, got the uh, glue here. I've cut this back so that it shouldn't show through the hole. And I'll split the difference on this. Now the grain on this is running perpendicular also, so that you understand that you shouldn't be able to uh, it shouldn't be able to split. It's the same kind of wood as the top, but it's going across the grain, so it should hold very well. Now this one we don't need to get too elaborate on, I don't think. So I think I would put this piece of leather on the outside. I'll just put this little block of wood on the inside to keep it flat and then we'll just squeeze it down right there. So let me find the clamp for that and I'll show you what that looks like here in just a minute. Okay I'm going to give it my best shot here to get this in here. This this may not be the easiest thing to do especially since this other clamp is kind of in my way. That looks like that might work. Then I'll put this leather here and basically I'm just wanting to kind of span the crack there and smush it together. That looks like that's working. I see glue squeezing out on my little patch in there. So that ought to do it. Now I'm going to let these set quite a while, for sure overnight. Because again, it's, it's, it's also flattening this out some more, yeah, it, you understand. Uh, maybe not a lot more, but it is actually flattening it a little bit more. Not as much as I w wish it was, but it's still flattening it. My friends, it's been weeks, I guess, several weeks since I was able to work on this guitar. And uh, I, the good news is that this really did flatten out a lot. Is it perfectly flat? No, but it's really improved. Um, 
this was so out of flat when when it when it came in here. Let's see if I can just kind of give you an idea now. Now there's oh 30 or 40 thousandths depth there. There used to be an eighth of an inch depth there. So it's improved by a, you know a, a tremendous amount. 75% improvement at least, if not more. Um, all the braces that were loose inside have been glued up and, and they've been drying for quite a while. We're pretty much ready to set this thing up. So I'm gonna do a light fret job on this. I doubt I'm gonna film that because you've seen it so many times in my videos. But uh, we'll, if I run across anything that I think you need to see while I'm doing it, I'll show you. I've done a bit of a fret leveling on this. I haven't recrowned the frets yet or anything, but you know, I got to thinking while I'm doing this, I want to get the oil into these tuning keys. And uh, you know, I just thought it'd be interesting to show you this. I know many of you have seen this before. The, uh, you know, the tuning keys are enclosed, but you notice they left a hole to oil them through. That's what that little hole is for, is to oil your keys. And so I dropped oil down through that hole and it hits right on the worm gear. And that makes them turn a lot better. They were really stiff, very stiff. And when they're stiff, that means they're wearing. So you don't want them to wear and uh, you think they might slip this way, but they don't. They won't slip. Oiling them is a good thing. I mean, they wouldn't leave an oil hole there if they didn't want you to oil them. In fact, this one's still pretty tight. I'm gonna put a little more oil on this one. It doesn't even hurt to put it right on the shaft sometimes. The shaft can be the thing that's binding. This one here is a little bit bent, not very badly, but it is just a little bent. But anyway, I just thought you might get a kick out of seeing, uh, you know, the oiling process there when you have uh, enclosed tuning keys, but they did leave a hole for the oil in this case. So there you go. Now I'm gonna recrown the frets and clean the fretboard up. Okay, I've polished these frets with the 600 sandpaper. They look just about like brand new again and uh, I'm about ready to oil the fretboard. I've you know, scraped the fretboard down as much as I feel like I should. There's still a little bit of finger groove left in this, fingernail groove. So uh, not too bad, but a little bit left. But you know, if you take it all out, you're really removing a lot of wood sometimes, and I've already taken quite a bit off, so I feel like that's about where I should leave it. I like to just work this in and around to get it back under the frets pretty good. Once I get it on there, really put on more than I needed. I, I could have probably put about half that much on there and I'd have been fine. So I kind of wasted some of it there. Once you get it on there, maybe let it set for just a few minutes or just a minute or so, and then you just wipe it right back off. You don't have to let it set very long. So I'll give it a couple minutes here and then I'll wipe it right back off. Okay, I'm gonna wipe it back off. And in this case, what I used was the Be Good Oil. Um, linseed oil works just fine too. Most any oil that doesn't turn rancid works just fine, really. I think the Be Good Oil is very good because it is uh, food safe for one thing, and uh, meaning that it you know you don't have any anything toxic there. And then the other side of that is that it has a little bit of beeswax in it also, which helps seal it a little bit. So I think it's very good for this. But the linseed oil I think is just fine also. Okay, well that looks about as good as it needs to look. Now we'll. I think string this puppy up. I think we're that far along. So I'll look at it again real quick just to make sure. I may have to make a new saddle. I don't remember if I saved the saddle or not, but we'll figure it out and get it going. As I was getting ready to make the saddle for this, I noticed there was creeping crud down in this here, and I've already started scraping it out, but there's, it's like a, a buildup of varnish in places, so your saddle could never sit perfectly flat if there's lumps of stuff there, and there's definitely lumps. I've got most of it out already, but I just thought I'd film that to show you that you need to make sure your saddle, the bottom of your saddle is perfectly level. You don't want to have any big things sticking up, you know, because your saddle would teeter on that. It would never make good contact. So there was, this was sticking up right here, 
probably 20 thousandths of an inch, which doesn't seem like very much because it isn't, but 20 thousandths would be enough for the saddle to rock on and it wouldn't sit very well. I don't know how that got in there, but it was definitely in there. It looked like old varnish is what it looked like. There's, you can see here that this bridge has been varnished, at, at, or at least maybe it was done at the factory, I don't know, but there is varnish on here, and that varnish had built up right there in the middle, and uh, that's what it looked like it was to me. Anyway, I'm trying to scrape all that out. I, don't, I just want to, my antler saddle to contact the wood directly. I think we just about got it now. All right, well, I'll make a saddle that fits that now out of deer antler. Well, I've got me a piece of saddle made here, uh, antler saddle that is. I stuck it down in there. I'm not quite sure it bottomed out. I'll be honest, I'm not positive that it did, but it's perfectly tight. So I'm gonna draw a line across the back there, pull it back out of here if I can get it out. Um, that looks pretty uniform, so that looks about like the depth that we have there. I would prefer to see more depth, I'll be honest, but uh, we've got to work with what we've got. I mean, I could route it deeper because it's not very deep. Had to find my Kalipers. They leap all over the shop. Um, anyway, let's see how deep it is because it's not very deep. 115 thousandths, that's not very deep. I like to see them, you know, Golly, almost twice that deep, really. Of course, the whole bridge itself is not real thick. It's only 249. So 115 is a little bit less than halfway down. I'd like to see it two-thirds of the way down, to be honest. Um, I think it gives you a better sound, and I think it's much stronger, too. So bad as I hate it, I think I might route that a little bit deeper because that's really a shallow, shallow bridge. And especially if the bridge ends up being fairly tall, that's very bad, I think. Uh, I don't know. It's a lot of extra work. It feels like it's all the way to the bottom. I'm trying to decide whether we're going to have a tall saddle or not. kind of don't think we will. I think we'll have a fairly low saddle. I don't know. I'm tempted to uh, leave it like it is because it's been that way all these years. That part seems to be stable. The bridge is solid and everything so if it ain't broke maybe don't fix it, huh? Well, the only thing is I need to uh, figure out how high of a saddle I want on this and I'm just going to kind of guess at first. I've drawn a darker pencil line there, and I'm going to leave at least that much, probably a little more, and then we'll check it and see where we're at. Okay, I've left a fairly tall saddle there, so I'll get some strings now, and we'll start stringing it up and see where we're at. Well, you can see I've started putting the two strings on here to check uh, action and things, but what I noticed when I was putting this string on is there's a fine line here, and that fine line is an actual uh, crack or, uh, you know, it may be they had the extra wing glued on there and the glue has failed, probably hide glue. Uh, it's failed all the way through, I see. And yeah, it's definitely loose enough. I can pull it apart and open it up. So because I can do that, I'm going to try to get tight bond in there, and I'll show you what that looks like here in just a minute. Okay, this is a delicate operation. You don't want to make it worse. So what I'm going to do is I have a hardwood wedge here made out of maple, and I just went over to the sander, sanded it really smooth and really fine point. That's in, important for doing this. You want to get that fine point started down in there and you want to open this up and blow through there to get the dirt out, things like that. I can see all the way through there very clearly now. So now I'm going to take the uh, tight bond glue and I'm going to try to find my little glue dispenser, 
which is evading me at the moment, so I'll be back with you in a minute. Well, I found my glue bot. Uh, the end on this is all messed up. Um, I know I've got more parts for that, but I can't find them, so just have to make do with what I got. Well, I've got this wedge in there, and so I'm going to start from the opposite side here and try to squeeze glue down in there. And didn't do a very good job of that, but that's okay. I've got my brush here. Just dampen the brush down a little bit. Get the glue down. I'll poke the glue down in there. You'd be surprised how well it pokes down in places like that. The brush itself extends down in there further than you think. I doubt we'll see it coming out the bottom side, but I'm hoping we do. Uh, there's nothing coming out the bottom, that's for sure, but we'll get some in here. And it's going down in there, I can see it. And I'm getting some of the bristles of the brush down in there, which helps. I think that's going to work. It's not not the best glue job I ever did, I don't think, but it's, I think it's going to be more than sufficient to fix this. There's not much stress there, and I'm pretty sure the tight bond will hold it. Okay, so now I'll just take a slightly damp cloth here and wipe this off. Now I'll put a clamp across this. I've got these rubber padded clamps. I think they'll work just fine for this purpose. And you can see the glue squeezing out really well there. In fact, it squeezed out a lot more than I even thought, so there's got to be good glue down in there. I didn't think it would even squeeze out that much. So I'd say we're good. Typically, if that much is squeezing out, there's quite a bit going on the inside too. Maybe not quite as much, but there'll be quite a bit. So tighten that up just a little bit more even, because it's good to have it really tight. That's not a very serious problem, but that should fix it. And uh, I, I feel very confident that that tight bond, you know, we'll let that set for a couple hours and that should hold it just fine. While that's working there, I'll work back here and see where we're at. Hopefully I can still tune it up. I think I can. I'm gonna tune it up to about pitch and then check the action. Okay, I've got the two E strings tuned up to pitch. Uh, you know, this is not a perfect way to set the action, but it gives you, at least you're in the ballpark. And, you know, if you had all the strings on there with all the tension, that would be better, of course. But you gotta start somewhere. Well, that's not actually not too bad. That's only about 110, and this is, Geez, it's only about 75, 80, about 80, I guess. So 110 and 80 is not far off from where we want to be. Actually, it's 100. I said 110. I was looking at the 10 there, which means 100 in this case. So I was misled. misled. So it's at 100 and it's at, just double check it, 80. So we're really pretty close to where we want to be already. Um, I think I'm going to take 20 thousandths off this side and 10 thousandths off this side and then we'll string it all the way up and see what that does. So 20 to 10 and then we'll string it all up and then we'll be close. We may have to adjust it again, but I don't want to go too far too fast. Well, my friends, I've got the strings on here, but quite honestly, because it's been so long since I worked on this, I had forgotten about an issue. This corner of this bridge is uh, still loose. I can't remember if I have already tried gluing that already or not, but it is still very loose, and you can slide this under there pretty far. 
you know, so I tell you, I don't remember if I tried to fix this or not on camera. If I did, obviously it's going to show up in the video. But uh, there's just been so many things happen here that I can't keep everything straight. <sighs> anyway, I'm trying to clean it out. I've got this little, this kind. I'm using it kind of like a little scraper. Uh, because the tension's on there, there's more space under here now. And so I'm just taking the advantage of the fact that the tension's on there to clean this out. I'm just trying to get as much creeping crud out of there as possible. And what I'm going to do while I've got the tension on there is I'm going to get this glue under here. I'm going to squeeze the tight bond in there really good. And I'm going to take my paintbrush. And I'm going to work it back under there really good. I can see that there's a lot of glue under there because when I push it in on one side, it's kind of coming out on the other. So I feel like we've got pretty darn good coverage. I'm going to give it this one last try and we'll clamp this up and leave it overnight and maybe even for uh, two days uh, just to give this its best chance for that glue to cure and everything. So I'm going to take the tension off the strings now. Okay, all the tension's off, off there, and that's even that's already starting to cause the glue to squeeze out. I'm going to take one or two pins out, probably two, to give myself enough room to get in here with a clamp and clamp this down as tight as I can clamp it. I'm pretty sure I've already tried to glue this once, but I don't figure it'll hurt to try it again because he did not want to take the bridge off if we didn't have to. And I, you know, kind of agree with that. I always do the simple thing first. And if it works, great. And if it doesn't work, well, then we didn't really cause much of a problem. We'll just do it all the way, you know, if we have to. All right, so that's clamped about as tight as that can be clamped. Uh, I'll clean up the glue squeeze out there and we'll see what happens. I gotta be honest, since I believe I've tried this once already, I doubt this is gonna hold, but you just never know. Sometimes it does work. And if it does work, it saves all kinds of time and money. Okay. Got a clean rag to just clean up the glue. All right, that should work. We're going to let that set for several hours. Um, you know, probably at least till tomorrow and perhaps even a next, another day. But uh, that way we'll give it our, its best chance of holding. Well, my friends, I let it sit for two or three days, strung it up, tuned it up to pitch, and it held for a while and then I heard it go pop and this came loose again. So, you know, because of that, you know, it's, it's loose, you can see there. And because of that, it's just time to cut my losses, take this thing apart and uh, take it off there. Uh, I don't know, I'm gonna take these nuts off, see if I can pry this up without having to take these bolts completely out because if I do I'll you know I possibly ruin this this pearl I mean I, there's a chance I could get it out without any problem but then again you never know so if I don't have to no point in trying that I don't know if these nuts are loose enough by hand apparently not so I'll have to get a tool in there to get them loose I was able to reach in there. I had this little seven millimeter wrench handy. Uh, I think it's probably actually a quarter inch. This was a little loose on there, but it, it loosened them up anyway. And I got the little nuts and washers out of there. So I'm gonna heat this up now and see if I can pry it up and uh, just pick it straight up. Don't know if I can or not, but it's worth a try. One issue I may have with this is this has varnish on the top of the bridge, which I don't like to see anyway, but we're probably going to be melting that off. Well, I turn it on here. It's going to go up to about 420 degrees. 
it's going to take a few minutes so I'll turn the camera back on when we get up close to our temperature. Well as I suspected we're melting the finish off of this which is no great loss in my opinion but I don't like to see anything like that but I don't have an option you know. Yeah, well, it's probably good we're taking this off because I don't think it was held by much anyway. I think there may, there may be other problems under this too. Well, that wasn't very hard to get off, I'll say that. Wasn't glued down very good. The little bit of stuff you see there is, is just very thin, very wispy, it's not much. Yeah, I don't know. We'll fix it and put it back together the right way. Okay, so we've got the bridge off. It's got the post still on there. I, you know, don't like that, but I think it'll work. I'm going to clean this all off now. It wasn't stuck very good, to be honest with you. I think that was Gibson's deal with they would uh, rely on these fasteners more than the glue, which was a huge mistake in my opinion. Probably the biggest mistake in guitar making history in my opinion. The other thing they did here, which is kind of weird, is they put a lot of lines in this going this way. I guess they thought that would help, uh, but it really doesn't. It's better to have it perfectly smooth uh, bare wood than it is to have all those lines in it but back when this was made they were probably experimenting now these screws are loose and I'm afraid they might spin on me so what I might do is put a dab of CA glue on the screws so that it you know sticks them in there when I put the nuts back on I don't want to have them spinning on me I really don't even want to put them back on, but I will just because the customer wanted to keep it all original, so I said, okay. Well, that seems pretty clean. While I've got this off here, I'm going to go ahead and clean off all this finish too, because there's no reason to have this finish on the bridge. I'm just going to scrape it all off, get rid of it. I don't know if that was done at the factory or if that was done after, afterwards by somebody else, but it's not a good thing. You don't need finish on your bridge or on your fingerboard. Yeah, that probably looks bad right now, but once we get the oil on it and everything, I think it'll look just fine. But we won't put any oil on it until we've got it glued in place because we don't want to take a chance of the oil contaminating the glue joint. This uh, still not real happy with the bottom of this. It's, it's cleaned off, but it just doesn't uh, seem like a good piece of wood for gluing. And that's just the truth of it. it all these big ridges in it. I wish they didn't have that. It would have a lot better stick em power if it uh, was smooth instead of all these big deep gouges in it. Well, that's probably as good as we're gonna do. I'll get some uh, acetone and clean that off. In a recent video, someone said I was doing this over the top of a guitar that the acetone was going to, uh, you know, mess up the finish of the guitar. Well, first of all, I was doing it for the camera, but second of all, you can't squeeze. If I twist this as hard as I want to, there's no acetone going to come out of that. Acetone is incredibly thin, and uh, but yet it, it cleans really good. I mean, it's not going to drip or get on anything so you know I don't know you get all those comments from all the knuckleheads out there in the gallery anyway hopefully that'll wipe off the extra oil and make it stick you know to dry wood as best as possible 
I still don't like all those deep grooves they've got in there. I really don't like that. That is not going to help the stick'em power at all. The first thing I see at, when looking at this is, you know, this is cocked up like this. In other words, this back is raised like that. And the reason for that is that the bridge pad follows that line exactly. I mean, the bridge pad is the exact same size as the bridge. The bridge pad should have extended back here. That would have made all the difference in the world on the strength. Uh, I really don't like this the way this is. Because, you know, it's, you've already got one strike against you when it's leaning forward like that. And it's leaning forward more than you might think. Let's see if we can measure that. Okay, you're going to have to take my word for this because I have to see this, but this right there is exactly level. If I put this here and hold it at that angle, it's four degrees. So this is angled up at four degrees from this, which is not good. Well, I don't know what to do about that, really. I don't think it's going to do much good to change the bridge pad. It would be really nice if that bridge pad was out of there. It seriously, the bridge pad exactly follows that line right there. The, the holes are at, at the same place on the bridge pad as they are right here. Oh my gosh, what a, what a shame. I really wish that bridge pad extended back about a half inch or even an inch would be fine. I think I'd say it's a maple bridge pad. But it's narrow. It only It's only the size of this. I just wonder if it's tight. If, it's, if it would happen to be loose, it's coming out of there. I just don't know if it's tight or not. It feels tight. I don't think there's any reason to take it out of there. Wish there was a good way to fix that though, because that, that pulling forward is not a good thing. Well, I'm going to clean this area off. This is the area I had glued a couple times, and you can see the glue's just piled up there. I really think that polish or wax or something had gotten under here, and the glue just went to stick to it. In fact, I think we got a real problem there. It looks like this something like an oil or something's penetrated into this. Somebody intentionally scratched this one this way. If you look at it close, you can see the scratches in there. That is not good. So maybe this bridge came off once before and some amateur had at it, or maybe they did that from the factory. I don't know. I can tell you for sure it ain't good. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. I got my doubts about this whole mess. I have to get the bridge and lay it on here and see if the entire finish is exposed or if there's... It looks okay. I just want to clean it off right up to the line though. Yeah, there's a lot of junk here, boy. This is going to take a little while to clean this all off. Boy, I hope it'll hold after we clean it all off. I'll clean the rest of it off camera and show you what it looks like here in a minute. Well, my friends, I have cleaned that as good as I can clean it. I put this on and off four or five times, just making sure I've got all the finish out from underneath it. It's as good as it can be done, you know, under the circumstances. I mean, if you really wanted to do it better you'd have to take this whole bridge plate out and you just have to do a lot of work here and it wouldn't be as original and he wants to keep it original so I think I'm just gonna give it my best shot here I have cleaned that as good as a guy could possibly clean it I think so if it's ever going to hold, it ought to hold. That's all I can say. I said I was going to put CA glue on these threads, but quite honestly, this glue here getting down in there will probably be just as good for the purposes just of holding it to keep it from spinning. 
Well, that, that's a good start. Now we'll move on to the next part. Well, one thing I didn't think about was these pins sticking through there. They're great for locating it and all that, but they make it a mess for putting your call in there because now they're going to hit where your call would have been. Ah, oh, man, bummer. So, I don't know. Don't know what to do about that. I don't know if I can find a way to drill them out and drill a hole for my call. I just don't think it's possible to get it lined up and get it right. So, I guess we're doing it without a call. If ever I did want to use a call, it was on this one too. Oh uh, well, stuff happens. It's actually clamping down good. Got really good squeeze out all the way around, which kind of surprises me a little bit. I didn't think it would be that good. Now I can't get this in. Well, that kind of sucks. Why won't that go in there? You'd think if the other ones went in there, this one would go, but it won't. Uh, maybe I can move this one over. Maybe I can get the, this one in the center. Maybe. Or maybe not. My goodness. Why is this being such a pain? Usually I don't have this problem. I think the sound hole is encroaching on my area here for some reason. This sound hole, the distance between here and here is, must be less on this guitar. Because I can't get past it. Try it from this side and see if I can get past it this way. There we got it. Now we got three of them in there. Can I get three of them back out later? I don't know. It's been several days I've taken the clamps off this bridge. I'm just cleaning it up and I realized that one of these little buttons had popped out and the reason it popped out I'll be honest was because I think the clamp hit the little screw on the inside in there and popped it up so we got to put the bolts back on this yet too or the nuts but right now I'm just going to glue this little screw or this little uh, I'm going to glue the little mother of pearl piece back in here well that was uh, really clogged more so than I would have ever thought. I'm just going to fill the little hole there with glue, set this in place, hopefully mash it in there. I have to get my close-up glasses to see if it's in there the way I want it. I think it works. Yeah, that feels pretty good. The other one didn't come loose, I don't think. All right. All right, we're in pretty good shape. I'm gonna put some oil on this. It doesn't take much. There's still some stuff here. There's some glue or something on this. All right, that's got that fixed. I'm gonna put the little nuts, or the little washers and nuts back on on the inside. No point in you watching me do that because you can't see what I'm doing anyway. You know, if it doesn't happen on camera, it doesn't happen, right? So here's the nut and washer. Whoops, just dropped the washer. Wouldn't you know, that's what happens when you turn the camera on. See, I didn't do that on the other one. I already put the other side on. Even though this wrench doesn't fit it perfectly, it's a seven millimeter, probably need a six. It, it's good enough to tighten it up as tight as it needs to be. Now we're just down to uh, cleaning out the holes. They've got glue in them now from re-putting the bridge on. So I'll get that all cleaned out and I'll bring you back here in just a minute. I'm gonna start with a 3 16 That might be good enough, but what I'll do just for insurance purposes is I'll take my reamer and I'll run it down in here. And I always stop as soon as I can feel it. Oh, I felt it. As soon as I can feel it on the end of my finger, I always stop right there. 
This is just a violin peg reamer, but it works great for this as long as you don't go too deep. That's why you have to put your finger over the hole and as soon as you feel the end of the thing, you stop. So that should be just perfect. Now we'll put the strings on it. Well, it hopefully it'll be easy to get the strings on this since I've already got the strings coiled up at the other end. I also went over off camera and beveled the ends of all these pins, which I had not done at this point, but I did do it just now. Well, it's in pretty darn good shape right now. This bridge has had about a week to cure, so hopefully everything should be good. Let's tune it up. My friends, it's been a long, tough battle on this old Warhorse Gibson, but I think we finally won. It's uh, a pretty good sounded old Gibson guitar. It ain't broke no more. <laughs> One of the biggest things was fixing this. This was so caved in. Of course, that bridge took some work too, and we did a fret job. We did just a little bit about everything on this. Glued the peg head crack back up here. And it, it needed some TLC, and it got some. I sure do hope you enjoyed seeing how this old Gibson went back together. If you did, give us a big old thumbs up. If you're not yet subscribed, well, shame on you. Get that done too. And then hopefully you'll watch our next video. Thank you so much for watching.